My name is Anthony Telford. We're at uh, in Mascot. I've just opened a new cafe called Tartine. I'll explain all about it. I was eating a tartine. I'm just wondering why it's never taken off since. You know, everyone's doing this burger craze, and I'm like, this is a simple, open-faced sandwich, great to share. Nothing's happened about it. Uh, no one's picked up on it. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah, it's a French open-faced uh, sandwich. Kind of fancy, I guess. Uh, the, t the toppings are fresh, flavoursome. Uh, it's one slice of quality bread. We use brasserie bread here and uh, just a mix of, of toppings. But not just that, we've also thrown in a jaffle menu, um, which is a closed pressed sandwich for those who don't quite get their head around just one slice of bread, you know what I mean? As far as an experience different to public dining room, I'm, I'm done with the fine dining scene. I'm done with swipes and gels and molecular. I just want to do something that's uh, approachable and accessible on an everyday level. You know, we can get customers here eating once, two, two, three, four times a week as opposed to maybe once every month. So, I, and I enjoy seeing them more often. Um, look, I, I run what's called a cold kitchen. Uh, so I don't need exhaust canapes and ovens. Um, the bread is brought in from raspberry bread. I outsource the meat that is put together at Havrick's Meats uh, with their Cook and Sons product. So all their stuff is cooked sous vide, long and slow. That allows me just to heat it in the bag and then shred it. Um, the eggs are cooked at 62 degrees, 62 minutes, so there's no poaching, no scrambled, no fried, uh, no carcinogens in the air. It's all clean, fresh, healthy. It's uh, ethical wherever possible, it's sustainable wherever possible, free range, organic whenever I can. Um, and so that keeps the product fresh and allows me to just assemble the last minute and put out a very fresh product. So that's how we work. Yeah. So what's the what sort of clientele are you getting and how how does that compare to public yeah, dining room? Yeah, good question. We um I think it's the same clientele. I think it's the clientele that we're in fine dining, they go out um, maybe once a month as an occasion, once every fortnight, once every three months. These are the very same people now able to eat two, three, four times a week. Uh, I've got customers here every day. Um, they they just wouldn't do that in public dining room. Maybe it's a little demographic wise, it's a um, on income, socio-economically they're a little bit lower, but I'm finding I've got some very wealthy customers coming in here as well, quite often. So, um, yeah, just relaxing. There's no under the pretense, you know. There's no waiter sitting on your elbow waiting to, you know, do whatever it is. You know, it's um, yeah, it's quite relaxed. We're looking. The, the demographic is anybody you can afford ten bucks. It's pretty simple stuff, you know. The average spend is might be thirteen, fourteen dollars a head. Tough gig to make money on, but again, if, if, if the system's right and the speed of, of service is there, uh, and if you've got enough of them out there, you'll make a quid. But it's more about um, allowing people to come through and <clears throat> experience something they haven't really experienced before. So uh, that I've said, thought for many, many, many years. Why not we do this? You know. So yeah, we'll see how it goes, man. Yeah. We get our liquor license as well. Um, so a real classic French cafe where uh, you know you can have a beer or a glass of wine on a Sunday afternoon and uh, trade into the early evening, all share food. Uh, that's what we're looking to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's what I call roadkill furniture. Uh, we do a drive around the local. We keep it uh, very local. We drive around. We pick a lot of things up on the side of the road. Um, my partner and I. Uh, Amy and myself, we refurbish it. Uh, so repurposed, reused furniture uh, with a bit of love and care. Um, and that gives it that sort of, I guess, e eclectic sort of interesting feel, homely feel. Um, you know, and moving forward when we plan to open others, they won't all be like this. You know, there'll be different themes, but the food, the menu, all that sort of stuff will be the same. Uh, moving forward, the model, uh, I'd love six of these, you know, um, based with each, each furniture style, each theme will be quite different. So the idea is that you actually have, you'll want to go to all six to get a different feel. The menus and the service will be the same throughout. That'll be the consistent part there, yeah. All of them will have that sort of warm, intimate feel without a heater. You know, it's, um, it's, it's the idea is to design something, again, with repurposed furniture, but with a particular theme in mind. Um, this one's sort of, I don't know what I even call this, urban rustic, I guess, you know, urban rustic feel, nice and warm in a modern building, um, something for the locals, really. You can find one in Haymarket in the city, one in Chatswood, uh, uh, a little bit out west, I'm not too sure how far, um, and then again, something in east, maybe Bondi, Bronte, that way as well. Um, yeah, 
and maybe Melbourne as well. You know, go back to my hometown and open one or two over there. But it, it depends on um, having a base kitchen, getting the product out, getting the team trained, uh, and getting a formula in place that allows me to, I guess, cookie cut the idea and get it out there. We'll just wait and see. Mm -hmm.